welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios, and today I'm going to be showing you how to build yourself roads. That way you can build a city using a strong foundation by having a transport system. So without further ado, let's investigate how we'd go about this. So our palette is pretty simple. A bunch of more refined blocks are going to have to do a little bit of mining for these, but hopefully these aren't too hard. And yes, I am using daylight sensors. From here, what you want to do is find an area you want to build a city on. I flattened this area pretty quick using structure gel, which this is the first tutorial to be using that, so woohoo. And what you want to do from here is start by placing down a little bit of gray concrete. You could use black, but I prefer gray for this, mainly because black is a little too overbearing. Although, if you want to make a highway, then black would be the way to go. So, account for how wide you want your cars to be. Even if you're not going to include cars, just think, if you were to place a car on here, how wide would it be, excluding like buttons on the wheels. Typically, I build my cars three blocks wide, so we're going to have to have two lanes. So like this, pretty simple. And then, once you have that down, go back here, and line the edges with a little bit of smooth quartz in order to make bike lanes. For the bike lanes, this part is optional if you are making a highway. And then, a little extra gray concrete down the middle, some smooth quartz, so get some of that. And now, we have a very small segment. I'm not going to do sidewalks quite yet, but extend this for a couple blocks each direction. With this small section of road, you can see where this is going. Well, more specifically, it's going east to west. I'm sorry, I just had to make that joke. But anyways, what you want to do is in this middle line, separate it a little in order to break up the monotony of it. Since they are roads, they aren't meant to be super pretty, but it's still worth it to add a little bit of flair to it. So, something like that. And then go to the edges of it. Of course, skip this if it's a highway and build sidewalks. I really like smooth stone slabs for this, and you can see it being slabs makes it a little less expensive. So do this, and once you have your sidewalk, then you'll have a lot of road stuff already finished. So do this, and you can see how this will become a road relatively easily. Next up, inclines. Since the basic structure is already here, we have the slabs, stairs, middle parts, all that. Then, you need to figure out how to do changes in elevation. For this, what you need to do is, of course, decrease the elevation. And two, make sure that these gaps are the same, where the line breaks up the road. You have to make sure that it doesn't change on these segments. Not to mention, you have to be careful not to let any random blocks peek out of here. Say, if this was normal, I mean, that completely destroys the build. Even though it's such a small detail, that really defines what isn't very good building. Make sure it doesn't look placed on, but rather it was built in. And then, preferably make sure that it's an even amount of blocks and can fit a car. Although my car's design wouldn't exactly fit on here, still, I build relatively long cars so it might not be an issue depending on how you build yours. So, with all this in mind, you can figure out how to go up and down hills. And now, you have your road pretty much complete for straight lines. But, of course, roads do a little bit more than that. They also have intersections. Going straight for the complex stuff, here is a four-way intersection. Of course, pretend that these roads here go on for quite some time before intersecting. What you need to do is 1. Smooth out the sidewalks like this. Make sure they're still walkable. And once you have that done, then what you can do from here is extend them into the road itself. I'm going to be using a little bit of structure gel in here because it saves a bunch of time on my end. So, getting my concrete out. So fill in the central part here, and then build the rest of the road. If you have the lines going into here, well, don't do that. This part needs to be bare, and 
Make sure to look at real roads for reference, because depending on what country you are from, your roads might look a little different. Or if you're building somewhere that's supposed to be in another country, then you might have to adapt to it. So always make sure that your roads look accurate to real life roads. Next up in our intersection, we have the traffic lights. Although you could make the three signal system, that can be quite difficult in Minecraft, and in order to avoid stealing designs, I've decided to just do simple banners. Along with that, don't forget about the buttons here, so that way people can use the crosswalk. Because apparently people can cross roads and uh, not jaywalk. So, of course, make sure to include that. From here, you can see how this all works. We can have slants, and then we can have intersections. Not all intersections need traffic lights, but... I do not know all the traffic laws, so it's mostly down to your discretion unless you study traffic. So in that case, build out your roads and then there will be the final details, medians and then street lights. Next up, street lights. There are two things you can do. Either you can use a more fancy redstone implementation that trades some of the looks for functionality. Or you could use an ultra frog light. I prefer the frog light because although it's, well, a little blander, it looks better. So, yeah, that's my real justification for using it. So, either one works, but I'm going to be using the frog light variation. Space these every couple of blocks or so. And once you're done with that, then what you want to do is you connect them all with chains. This will act as power lines. With street lights now in place, you can make some of them into power lines. I made every other one into a power line. Take a look at its design, and don't forget to look at real life reference photos in order to increase the accuracy. And now with these chains going across, this looks like a real road. Even if these power lines are a little extravagant when they have the extra stuff on top, still. You might want to make them double-sided, but that's down to personal preference. I might remove it. And a general rule of thumb, only do this one on main roads. If it's going through a neighborhood or something, no need to put the power lines. And if it's going on a curved road like this, you might want to only do the street lights, considering it's quite difficult to connect the chains. So, for the most part, do the chains on straight roads only. And with this in mind, then, place down all your street lights on the rest of your roads, and then we can start doing medians on some of them, which can make your roads a little prettier, but take up more space. With this curved road now in place, well, nothing really to say. All I did was copy this, repeatedly, going that direction. Then, it's time to continue our roads with a median instead. Remember, you can combine any of these except power lines and curved roads, because with power lines, you're just going to end up with some weird looking chains. So, one detail you can put is little parrots on the power lines, because chickens won't stay there, but parrots will. And then, what you want to do is get out your smooth stone slabs or whatever sidewalk block you have, and go over your lines, like this, and then you can widen it to maybe at most three blocks. But this is pretty steep right here. So you have to make sure that it's giving uh, the drivers, hypothetically, enough time to move out of the way so that way they don't go down the middle. So do this, and you'll notice that the lanes on the sides are now suddenly too small for a car. Well, that's an issue. In order to solve this issue, what you need to do is widen the road. So go here, and then when it starts widening, move your road outward, like this. Replace this with gray concrete to accommodate. And then with this general idea in mind, all you have to do is widen it and then leave that smooth stone section in the middle. With this central median that ends really quickly because I want to build a highway, well, there's not much to say about it. Besides, we need to add landscaping. I initially recommended birch leaves, but you can see how that wouldn't exactly work here, mainly because of a lack of space. Not to mention, birch leaves aren't necessarily the prettiest block. I recommend placing down some flowers and oak trees, 
or if you're in another biome, then use that biome's respective tree. Acacia could work, don't use giant jungle trees or dark oak trees though. Stick to the smaller trees, and azaleas will always work, well, pretty much 99% of the time, as long as they don't hit any of the lights nearby. So, something like this should work in order to make a pretty median. Don't forget about sweet berries existing too. Here, we have ourselves the decorated median. Take a good look at it. Just a bunch of oak trees and various flowers. Don't worry if you're having trouble getting good oak trees for this. You can always manually build one. Or you can potentially use a different tree and swap out the leaves and logs. From here, it's now time to do a highway. I've already built a segment up there, but first, of course, go to your incline. I made mine a little bit longer so it could actually fit cars for the final part of this. And then all the way up here, I have a segment that shows an incline for this. Notice how it's all wrapped in light gray concrete. So yes, it will be quite expensive, but this part only constitutes a small portion. Since once you're about 10, maybe eight blocks above the water, then you can make it a normal road with the same light gray concrete. And one thing of note, if you're going over land, you don't need to make it go higher unless it's going over other roads, say in a city. So copy that, go up, and then make a flat version of it that goes as far as you want. So here we are. We have the simple highway, supports, and what you need to know about this is one, supports can be less often than this. Because here's the thing, well, it's quite expensive. Make sure it at least goes into the ground, and make sure that the bottom block is completely concrete wherever you chose. Because otherwise, it looks very unstable. And then, with that out of the way, you can make this as long as you want. Although the intro spoils this, this is a re-recorded clip because OBS decided that 10 frame rate was perfect. Well, you can make this as long as you want. And yes, this takes 5 minutes to sprint across. So, well fun story, I just kept extending this and accidentally made the video longer because it turns into a tunnel later. But OBS decided, you know what? Let's only have a frame every 3 seconds, so the final 3 clips of this video have been merged into likely 2, and yeah, here's the tunnel. What you need to know about this is 1, uh, sorry for that brief epilepsy warning with the walls, and 2, make this out of stone bricks, because when you mine through it, then you get all the stone if you use silk touch, recuperate it by putting it back into the walls. Make sure there's ample lighting, support beams across here, put some lighting in the floor, and what do you know, tunnel. And then, the final part is turning. Of course, I recommend doing intersections whenever possible, but if need be, you can use this. Is it very accurate? No. Is it simple? Yes. If you truly wanted to make an accurate curved road, then you'd have to use circles, where choose a point between these two areas, and then place a circle on top of it, and then the edge of the circle would be the middle of the road with the white lines. So say I place a circle here, that's the perimeter, then it would go something like that. And then you'd put some gray concrete around it, all your accommodations, and what do you know, you have a wide turn so that way it's actually possible. But otherwise, use intersections when possible. But with that out of the way, well, only two clips for the outro, that's nice. And you are now done with this place. Yes, it can be quite the task to build an entire road network. And you don't have to build a whole network. I recommend doing it only in creative or for a city build and not making the city too large. But if you really want to, you can make this as large as you want. And it's a very interesting thing to show off. Especially since you can use things like clone commands, fill commands, or if you're on Java and modded, then you can use the structure gel API, which I've been using throughout the video. So through those methods, you can build a really nice road network and truly make your city come together. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe. Either way, enjoy the rest of your day. Gearsaw out.